Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Elena Brewer from Erie Community College at Buffalo, New York. And I would like to give a presentation about development of free electronic educational resources for technician education and vacuum technology. Uh, this work is done as a part of an NSF new to AT project uh, with a three hundred thousand dollars budget, um, and it's focusing on development of ebook and other interactive instructional materials for technician education uh, in vacuum. Uh, I'm a project investigator. Uh, as I said, I'm from Erie Community College, uh, from Electrical Engineering Technology and Nanotechnology. Um, and Nancy Lawaji is a co-PI on this grant, um, and she is um, a chair of engineering technology programs at Normandale Community College. Um, we we'll also have David Hutter on the team as a consultant, and he is a primary author of Introduction to Vacuum Technology textbook. Uh, he is retired from uh, Portland Community College and he has been teaching semiconductor and vacuum courses for many years prior to retirement. Our external evaluator is Bob Bailey uh, from Out Outcomes Consulting Services. So uh, let's start with uh, the need uh, for developing the materials in question. Uh, in semiconductor industry, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, uh, there is a big need for technician and other personnel who, um, who can work as a maintenance tax, process tax, or equipment managers who have to understand vacuum system and what those system include and how it can be supported. Um, there is a huge need in US at the moment in um, developing a US-based uh, semiconductor manufacturing resources. Uh, it's supported in the legislature by CHIPS for America Act and FABS Act. And I think the biggest shining example of um, the big development effort happening right now is a building of you new Intel Corporation Megafab in Columbus, Ohio. So you see like little plans uh, of, for that Megafab on, on your right. Uh, there is a lot of vacuum-based equipment in any semiconductor manufacturing facility. So, and because of that, a key part of a semiconductor maintenance technician skill set is a knowledge of vacuum technology. So uh, what should be a part of the curriculum for teaching vacuum system to a technician? Well, we need instructional materials, like we need a textbook and we need some laboratory instruction. Uh, we need training facilities with a uh, industry standard vacuum equipment, and we also need qualified instructors who are capable teaching vacuum systems. So current situation, uh, well, in the current situation, up until 2019, uh, the book which was used by most of vacuum technology programs and courses in this country, for specifically training technicians uh, was Introduction to Vacuum Technology by David Hutter. The book went out of print by 2019. There are other vacuum reference or resource books available, which are excellent books, and they comprehensively cover a lot of topics, but they're not really targeting, they're not really a technician level um, educational textbooks, or which could be easily used uh, in a technician level uh, 
educational program. Uh, as an example, I mean, um, most of uh, the books you see here, uh, they, they would have a comprehensive chapter on vacuum pumps, for example, and then a comprehensive chapter on uh, vacuum gauges. Uh, but when you teach a technician how to deal with vacuum system, it's more logical to start with introducing um, what kind of equipment you need to operate in this range of pressures in that particular vacuum regime, or what set of equipment uh, you, and, and, and what kind of maintenance and troubleshooting do you need to deal with when you go to a different level, like you know, from rough to high vacuum, for example. Um, so in a way, vac introduction to vacuum technology by David Hatta was the only textbook which approached uh, technician education from that point of view. And it is out of print. Uh, the, universe, the colleges and programs which were using uh, those materials and they were using it for training technicians in the US are Normandale Community College, they have an amazing telepresence uh, facility for remote instruction, as well as in-class facilities for training of uh, vacuum technicians. Uh, so they have the whole range of programs starting from two-year AAS program in vacuum and thin film technology to uh, just a set of three vacuum courses uh, packaged as a vacuum technology certificate. It's all based on industry needs uh, and a level at which industry needs their technicians to be trained. Erie Community College, uh, it uh, uses a set of three vacuum courses in our electrical engineering technology AAS program. <clears throat> we use it as a tech electives. Uh, also, we use it. Uh, vacuum courses in a nanotechnology AS program, and we're working on developing our micro-credential and vacuum technology, which essentially will reflect vacuum technology certificate course sequence from Normandale Community College. And there are other, uh, just, just examples or examples of some other colleges and programs which are uh, using uh, teaching vacuum technology either as part of uh, different courses or as a standalone courses. For example, Hudson Valley Community College has a semiconductor manufacturing technology AAS program. Uh, Mohawk Valley Community College has manufacturing uh, semiconductor manufacturing technology program. Penn State uh, is University actually uh, offers a nanofabrication manufacturing technology capstone semester to several community college uh, colleges from the state of Pennsylvania. So um, where students come to Penn State uh, clean room teaching facility for one semester to complete all the hands-on activities that also includes um, a lot of built-in vacuum training. Uh, there is also microelectronics technology. Uh, Portland Community College, we have nanotechnology programs uh, in Rio Salada College in Arizona, and, and there are others. That's just a brief uh, overview. Um, there is another problem, not, not problem, uh, current situation, uh, challenge, let's call that a challenge. Uh, most community college have small departments and in a small department, it's very hard to have a, a somebody, a, a faculty who specializes in vacuum, unless you have a vacuum technology uh, program. Uh, but in a lot of places, vacuum is a subset of some programs, so it's hard to find qualified instructors. Uh, that creates a barrier of entry or introducing vacuum technology into other coursework. 
Another barrier is curriculum development uh, in, in, in vacuum technology, especially lab development. And the cost of uh, building a vacuum equipment lab, lab with vacuum equipment, the knowledge for the equipment is necessary. So that kind of poses uh, some barriers of entry for schools to bring vacuum technology instructions into their curriculums or developing a vacuum curriculum uh, if, if it's a standalone curriculum. So we have challenges and we have lack of resources. There is only one logical thing to do is turn it into opportunity. And uh, the NSF AT project, uh, which we're currently working uh, with, uh, it's working to develop ebook adaptation of Hada's textbook with resources which support modern learning styles for a lot of students. Uh, there are some interactive interactive content, videos, animations, simulations, and things like that. Uh, the other part of the project is student laboratory manual and instructor's guide, which uh, outlines all the laboratory experiments or activities which could be done with each particular set of equipment. And this is very valuable for instructors as well as for students. So all of those interactive resources are published through Milne Publishing um, at SUNY Genesee Library. So let me give you a quick tour in our uh, ebook uh, for, for, for the basically rough vacuum technology. Um, this work is done as part of current IT project uh, and it focuses on rough vacuum systems. It covers only four chapters. So let me actually go into uh, the system and take a quick look at that. So this is a cover of the ebook. And on the left, you can see table of content. Um, which is expandable at least to the first level of detail. So for example, chapter two deals with behavior of gases and lays uh, out some fundamental concepts necessary to understand the rest of the ebook. Um, there are some topics here where you could go directly to the topic or you could go to the beginning of the chapter and see more detailed list of topics covered in that chapter. And clicking on each of them will bring you directly to that particular topic. Uh, after the table of contents, you have learning objectives for each chapter, which will help instructors to incorporate it in the lessons plans or in course out outcomes or program outcomes and tie it to the necessary pieces there. Okay. Uh, the interactive content of the ebook includes animation, different animations developed. So let me show you a couple of animations. So for Roots vacuum pumps, we had a student artist help us to develop the animation for Roots Blower Pump. Sorry for a little latency issue here because I am online recording this uh, presentation as, as well as trying to extract data to uh, run animation. We also have animations uh, which are various industry companies like a Bush Vacuum Solutions, for example, uh, gave us permission to use. Okay, here we go. So that's a little dry claw pump and it's a really, really pretty good animation. So we also have some animations uh, developed by uh, Sunsetted uh, 
AT centers like Maytag, for example, uh, but combination of those different types of animation does help you to visualize, help students to visualize what is actually happening inside of the vacuum system. We also incorporated some limited simulation examples, especially for uh, laying out the fundamentals to understand gas behaviors. So let me show you animation developed by Colorado State University through the PHET Interactive Simulation Center. That's a gas law presentation animation. Uh, so let me open it. So it has a simple chamber. Uh, you could change volume of the chamber. You could change temperature of the gas inside of the chamber by heating it up or cooling it down. Uh, you could also change pressure directly by adding gas into the chamber. Uh, you could you could change any two of those variables and keep one constant, and that allows you to correlate it to the gas laws like Boyle's law, or Charles law, uh, and help students to understand those topics better. Uh, the ebook contains interactive quizzes. Let me. There are, there are interactive quizzes at the end of each major section and also at the end of each chapter. So I, I'm looking at section 3.3. At the end of that section, you have interactive quiz. Uh, typically true, false, or multiple choice questions. And um, you have, a student can either go through the whole quiz and see feedback at the end, or they could choose to see the feedback in real time. Like for example, if I, um, answer a particular question incorrectly, it tells, yes, it's incorrect, please, uh, or incomplete, in this case, it's incomplete answer, uh, and, and it gives suggestion uh, which section, equation, or whatever to look at. Uh, if you uh, answer question correctly, it's incorrect, so it gives you a suggestion. For example, I really should have read the question. <laughs> you can retry and uh, try to answer it correctly. Uh, here we go. So it tells you the answer is correct. There are some true-false questions, and those ones you could choose to check right away or wait at the end. Of, of, of the quiz and uh, see their correct answers and feedback later. Um, and again, another multiple choice question, if I um, choose the wrong answer, it gives me a uh, reference in a textbook where you should look uh, to refresh your knowledge. It also gives you a short explanation uh, of, of why um, your answer is incorrect. And uh, the feedback is actually uh, ties to each particular incorrect answer because here, if I pick something else, so, 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 like incorrect answer, it could give me one uh, just explanation for the another incorrect answer, it will give you different explanation. Um, let's try to pick the right one. So we are at the end of five out of five questions. The test bank for each of the questions for each section is actually usually bigger than that. So you always see just a subset of uh, interactive questions. And next time you run it, you will see a different subset. Uh, so students can visit those end of section and chapter interactive quizzes and get some very, very valuable just in time uh, feedback. We also have video examples incorporated. I'll show you an example where 
Uh, we're talking about a simple rough vacuum system. Start with that, then I'll have a short video introduction of that vacuum system with uh, one of our faculty slash technician describing uh, how that system works. And then it follows up with uh, trying to put uh, the circuit diagram for uh, like a system diagram for that system. We introduce symbols and we proceed into doing a simplified schematic for that system. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, we also have different like type spin on animation slash video where um, it can take you through several pumping cycles. Uh, and tie together the concepts of uh, like, you know, pressure in, in a chamber uh, and during the cycle, like you know, gas flow direction, which vents are open, which vents are closed and like gas gets compressed and so far. So let me show you that little video, which was developed as a part of example numeric example. So you're taken from sort of five strokes in a pumping cycle and the gas pressure is represented by the color. Lighter color is a smaller gas pressure. You also see gas pressure being plotted on the left in a little graph pressure versus stroke number. And during each stroke, you can see the direction of gas flows, the position of the gas valves and things like that. Okay, so that is a little tour in the current project we're looking at. We're in the process of working on a student laboratory manual and instructor's guide. So this resource will be shared as soon as it is ready. Uh, the team is currently applying to a follow-up AT project to cover the rest of the chapters from Dave Hutter's book, which include high vacuum and more advanced topics. So we're actually submitting application um, due October of this year. So what kind of lessons learned do we want to share with you guys? There is a lot. And, and let me just pick some of them. Lesson one, choosing publishing platform can be difficult, <laughs> especially if you're brand new to e-publishing. So we uh, want to share some of the criteria which could help you to do the same thing. So first of all, make sure that you evaluate different publishing system based on functionality you need. You're going to need formulas, right? If you are writing any technology or science related book, right? Well, if, you, if, if your book is in liberal arts, maybe you don't, but maybe you do. So you, you, as a platform has to support it. Uh, you want to embed interactive videos, animation and simulations. Not every platform can do it. So you need to make sure that, uh, that, that your platform can. It should have self-generated table of content. Uh, it's really good if it has a built-in you know, like interactive quizzes or tests or some kind of uh, immediate feedback for the students. It's very important. Uh, it's important to be able to publish in different formats, especially like, you know, so you could read the, uh, your ebook on different devices. So you need to look into that as well. Uh, sustainability requirement is very important. Uh, what happens after the project runs out? You want your results to be accessible and available after your funding runs out. So. We were looking at free or very low cost housing of our resources after our grant ends. 
And Milan Publishing offered just a great solution for that for us. You also want to look at learning curve. I mean, it depends uh, who is on your team. You might be all brand new to e-publishing or you might be not. You also may have some uh, good, like, you know, you, you could have a web page developers, for example, on your team, uh, which would allow you to go to a more complex and more powerful platform. But then you might need to have dedicated people uh, to do some um, limited programming uh, for, for, for the ebook. So that needs to be evaluated upfront when you are bringing people into your team. Uh, when you're developing materials like that. So we went with Milne Publishing uh, through JNC, SUNY JNC Library. Uh, it's a free publishing. They give incredible uh, support, which was really, really good for our learning curve. Uh, they helped us to do uh, a lot of, uh, I mean, introductions, they helped us to set up uh, the ebook to begin with. They helped us with um, linkages. They helped us with any questions we had. And they were willing to like go in the platform, modify something to make it look better. Uh, they are planning to indefinitely house OER, Open Educational Resources, on the platform, so continuity is very important. And the platform met all the functionality we needed. Uh, some other platforms we evaluated uh, were OpenStax, uh, developed by Rice University, Libra Tax, developed by University of California. But uh, and and for your project, uh, some of those other a platform might work better. For us, for us, Milne Publishing was best. Lesson learned number three, animations development. Uh, if you guys have unlimited uh, budget to do animations, you could definitely outsource it to professional companies. There are many of them out there. But if you don't, have unlimited budget, then try to utilize your in-house resources. Your best resource a lot of times are students. So that's what we did. We used a student artist uh, to develop uh, graphics and animation sequences uh, through like, you know, G, G file formats using free generators available online. Uh, shorter animations, say we could upload them directly into the platform. Longer animations had to be first recorded as a video, MP4 format, and then upload on the YouTube. It helps to have your own channel where you could organize them. And if you only want uh, those videos to be accessible through the ebook. Then, when you upload it, make them unlisted. So they're not searchable. They're open to look at if you have a link, but they're not just explicitly searchable outside of the context. Next lesson learned interactive quizzes. Actually, this one was a breeze. You just have to make sure your platform supports educational interactive uh, quizzes or tests and uh, make sure that you provide feedback for each correct and incorrect answer so students can have learning experience from the quizzes as much as from using uh, the other e book uh, elements. Uh, cost control in video materials development. Again, if you're lucky to have unlimited budget, that slide is not for you. But if you're not, then probably professional recorded videos 
may not be the best way to go because they take a huge chunk of your budget for a very like few minutes really uh, uh, video recorded and edited material. Um, what instead you could do using house talent, faculty, students, staff who has experience creating and editing videos. There are uh, professional grade video editing software, Camtasia or Vegas Pro. Uh, we used Vegas Pro for two reasons. Um, first reason, our faculty who was doing video editing here, he is really familiar with that program. And second, we were able to get an incredible educational discount. Don't underestimate educational discounts. Sometimes they can cut off more than 50% from the cost of the product. Um, you can also cooperate with industry vendors. A lot of the animations or videos, they developed by industry already. And a lot of them are very interested in you using it and showing it to the next generation of technicians. Um, another strategy, cooperate with current or prior ATE centers who already developed a lot of material, video materials. In our case, we uh, had a really good relations with um, uh, staff from Sunset at Maytech ATE Center, and, and they were able to uh, provide us with some help uh, with video materials, with animations as well. Review process. Use subject matter experts to validate and improve the resource you're creating. Uh, our SME board represented all the stakeholders for those educational materials. Industry. Industry needs to make sure technicians you are training are prepared to work at their companies. Academia representatives, they evaluate pedagogical value of the product. And professional societies and AT centers representatives, they kind of do both. Plus they have like a bigger picture view of the whole thing. So uh, we had 10 SMEs reviewing. Uh, the ebook in fall of 2021. And uh, you could see uh, companies representing industries such as Kurt J. Lesker Company, PCB P0 Tronics. We had retired representatives from Intel and NREL as well. Uh, we had several representatives from community colleges and universities, as well as professional societies and AT centers. And some people on that board, they could wear two hats. For example, uh, they could be part of um, ATE Center and uh, teach in academia. So, so it's a little bit of overlap here. Uh, the feedback from uh, subject matter experts was mostly positive and it gave us um, some additional topics for future editions and, and, and updates um, indicated that we need to include more on troubleshooting and things like that. Make sure you incorporate enough time uh, to uh, do edits based on the feedback because it will be uh, almost as time consuming as uh, putting chapters together to begin with. Uh, so the lesson uh, learned, uh, which is about to be learned, probably it's a better way to say, uh, that is, is a feedback from actually using your materials uh, in your classes. Well, we used ebook during spring of 2022 uh, in several Normandale uh, community college classes and SUNY Erie community college classes. 
we also planning to do the first um, round of kind of like, you know, testing laboratory materials and class at Normandale and SUNY Erie in fall of 2022. And uh, in spring of 2023, we are expanding uh, to what colleges um, we, we, we could test materials even further and it's going to be both ebook and laboratory materials. So if you are interested to use ebook and or laboratory manuals, uh, instructor guides in your classes in spring of 2023, please contact myself. I'm a PI on this grant. Uh, it comes with a $600 stipend uh, to, to, to pay for like extra time you need to provide the feedback, required feedback from students and yourself uh, on evaluating uh, uh, the materials you are testing. Dissemination, for any of you who ever dealt with AT projects, you know, dissemination is a big chunk of that. So, and one of the pieces you have to have a website. Again, uh, based on your in-house expertise, you have options. You could uh, do basically a website from scratch. You could see if your college can add um, a section on the college website for you, or you could choose to go through AT Central Microsites, which is a free service for all the AT projects and uh, uh, consortiums and other type of uh, grant funded entities. Uh, so what we liked about the microsite, it's very simple and fast to create because it has a pre-built like blocks where you can just populate it with your information. It's free, learning curve is minimum. And <clears throat> if it is AT project, uh, it will have to be archived by AT Central uh, as a requirement having all of the materials already posted on AT Central um, run websites, microsites, just helps to facilitate that function. And of course, there are some limitations. If you decide to go this way, you don't have as much freedom on what elements to put in on how to lay it out, like, you know, visually. Uh, on, on your page, you have some freedom, but there are like certain elements you cannot include. Uh, so that was another dissemination related lesson learned. Um, lesson to be learned. <laughs> another lesson to be learned is, uh, well, we're planning to uh, hold a hands-on professional development workshop for community college faculty at Normandale Community College in, in, in uh, summer, spring and summer of 2023. So in end of May, uh, you would have a couple hour Zoom uh, meeting to kind of get introduced to resources and what to expect. And the hands-on portion of the workshop will be held at Normandale Community College in June 21 through 23. It's a three-day workshop. Uh, if you guys uh, need additional information, it's on our microsite. Um, it's available through our microsite. All right, and what are you gonna learn there? As uh, a community college faculty, you guys will be able to work on actual industry standard vacuum equipment. You will be able to put system together. You're going to see what kind of equipment fits. You will have experience of running through some of the lab activities and so far. So those are uh, photographs of a rough vacuum trainer developed by Normandale Community College on the left and Erie Community College on the right. Both of them will be present at the workshop. 
as, as well as just the components to put systems like that together. So you will get a lot of hands-on experience. And that's pretty much it. In the conclusion, I just would like to say that if you have any questions, if you want to be involved in a classroom testing of ebook or lab materials or both, or if you're interested in that hands-on professional development workshop in 2023, please contact myself. I'm PI on this grant and here is my email. You could just send me an email with a topic of what you want to do. And I would like to thank you. And I would like to also thank National Science Foundation who, who is supporting the, the work done on this project. Thank you very much.